First of all, let me uh, thank all of you for coming out this morning. As you know, we launched this initiative where we want to get young people involved in the agribusiness opportunities in the country. And we started in Georgetown. We went to Region 3. And since then, the minister would have been receiving a number of calls, the minister and ministry, from young people all across the country wanting to be involved in the agro-food business opportunities. I want to also recognize very early the regional administration, the chairman, the vice chairman, your parliamentary representative, Jaffer Ali, Nigel Darmlal, who's working in this region too, Lionel, and all the other leaders in the region who also are very aggressive in reaching out to get this program into this region. Now, the objective of this program is to create agro-businesses within the food ecosystem. About even two years ago, three years ago, we did not have so many young people even thinking about agribusiness opportunities and how they can benefit from agribusiness opportunities. Because when you look at the in, from an individual level, you did not have the collateral, you don't have the capital, and frankly speaking, many of you did not believe that in the food ecosystem, there were opportunities to create businesses and opportunities to create wealth. Today, because of the enormous work of the Ministry of Agriculture, and I want to recognize all the technical staff, the Minister Ramraj, Dr. Waldron, the entire team, for the tremendous work that they have been doing in first implementing the government policy and educating the population, especially women and young people, on how they can be involved in this agri-food system. Only recently, I was at Columbia University in the US, and I was invited there to speak to agri-leaders, professors, on <clears throat> the policies we are adopting to transform not agriculture, but to transform the food ecosystem in Guyana. And that is what I want you to understand. What we are... Because this project is about all of you having a stake in owning something transformative. It's bringing the banks on board, the government creating the enabling environment, the infrastructure, helping you with a business plan, giving you the technical assistance. And I'm going to ask, because we've already started in this region, to build the first modern shade house facility that will be completed very soon. We have started with a prawns production facility and we're examining areas in which we can create opportunity for the swamp shrimp industry to expand. Outside of that, we want every region to have a major facility under this agri-innovation program the Youth Innovation Program that leads to self-sufficiency in eggs and chicken. So in this region, we are a bit luckier because we have started the development of a number of facilities. 
But we want these innovation centers to be tight centers. What do I, what do I mean? We are going to just use about five acres of land in these innovation centers. But we're going to make it very compact. The value that these lands will create, for example, if you look at three of the tunnel homes, that's 150 million Guyana dollars. And then, as I said, in this region, we want a group of you to be assigned to one of the ponds, the bronze production facility. Then some of you will want to be in a tunnel house. And some of you, of course, will be, well, we already have some in the shared house program. This, this program has been tremendously successful. And I'll ask the Minister of Agriculture to speak to you on when we started in Monrico, the number of students, number not students, number of young people, and the type of successes. I'll also ask Dr. Waldron to speak to you on the opportunities and how this system is going to work and how the program is going to work. Ramraj will speak to you on where we are with the existing, the new initiatives that we launched. And then I'll ask the banks to talk to you about their experience so far on this journey. Uh, because in this journey, you will be putting in a stake in it. So the value, because of what the government is investing in the infrastructure of the land, the value takes up the value of the land. So the valuation of the land is different, which helps the bank. But we believe that when you as young investors bring some skin in the game and you put your resources, individually, let's say you have $500,000. 10 of you collectively have $5 million. You understand? So that's the difference. We have experiences now. We're in one of the program. We have young people who are taking their, who are working and have gratuity. They're using that. So we want, and that is why we're coming at all level of the society. We want to create a new, innovative approach in this growth story of Guyana, in which there is expansion of the entrepreneur target group. And today that is the opportunity we want to discuss with you. So I will ask the minister to address you, then uh, Dr. Walron, then uh, Ram Raj, and after that the banks, and then we'll come back uh, to the uh, substantive matter, but uh, before I do that, where is the owner of the facility? What's his name again? Mr. Roy? Hercules. Come on, Hercules. <laughs> and I want you to really put your hands together for him for allowing us to use this facility. And this is an example. This facility is an example of how a small idea can grow into something that is of great vision. And if you look at this facility, those of you who would have passed it or used it, you would know how small he started and where it is today. And the type of facility that he's building out here, I can tell you. I've been to a lot of these facilities. And doing it right and continuing to build this out would have enormous potential. He can tell you. It's a lot of commitment. But once you're committed to a task and you have a vision, you will, uh, you will always be successful. So uh, thank you very much. I now ask uh, Zosi. And you have in this region great human resources. You have Nigel, you have Lionel, you have 
the chairman, the vice chairman, uh, Jaffa Rice. So all of these guys have to come together now to support the ideas and to ensure that you have that technical, because Joshi is going to tell you about the extension service we're going to give you too, because we're going to match this with a technical support to help you uh, develop the, this business and innovation center. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Good morning. First of all, I'm very happy to be with the president here this morning. As he rightly said, this is the third lunch for us in this youth program. And I want to recognize the role, very frankly, this morning, you young people, you are having an opportunity of a lifetime. And you are having an opportunity from a government that cares. But more importantly, you are having an opportunity from the head of state, a president who cares for young people, who wants to integrate young people, and who wants to bring young people into productive activity. And why I'm saying this, many countries, and I can tell you many, many places I went, and I can tell you that agriculture, as he rightly said, is one component, a subset of the entire food system. And because of the role of our president and what he has been doing, not only in Guyana, but across the region and different parts of the world, you have been recognized, and probably you all don't know it. Recently, I was with him in Costa Rica, where he was recognized to promote the first award for to transform the agri-food system in the region. He was recognized, the first award from ECO. Yeah. And then recently, only last couple of days ago, he received another award in London for the Caribbean Leadership Global Award. This tells us a story that we have a president who is not only in Guyana doing work and just doing things for doing things sake, but he's doing things that transform people's life, transform sectors. And what we are doing today, because let me tell you, when I became Minister of Agriculture, Guyana, agriculture was so bad in this country that we had lost our place. We, have, we had lost our place, and our place was taken up by a, a country called St. Vincent and the Grenadines, because they wanted to craft a food strategy for the pandemic, because we came into government when we had in the midst of the pandemic. And they wanted to create a um, craft a food strategy, and St. Vincent was leading that. And young people, if you, do, you know your you know history well, you'll know, since the formation of CARICOM, Guyana always lead on agriculture and food security. Always. But we had lost that place from 2015 to 2020 because we see at that, in that period the entire sector was de-emphasized. They had less budgetary allocation. The uh, budgetary allocation dropped from 18.5 billion to 13 billion dollars. And today we are only in four years, four years, just over four years. And we have seen the budgetary allocation increase from $13 billion to $97.5 billion. And that tells us a story that this government and the president has a vision. He has a vision. So when we got into government, the president said, look, Guyana has to be a major food producing country. We have to ensure that we take back the lead in agriculture. And I attended the, with him, with the president, I accompanied him to Belize at the first heads of government meeting when he became president. And at that meeting, the president made a presentation at that meeting to the heads of government, all the CARICOM heads of government, and show how we can reduce the food import bill of CARICOM by 25% by year 2025. And that entire presentation and proposal and, uh, that the president made there was accepted by the heads of government. And today, CARICOM is working aggressively to reduce the food import bill of the region. And thanks to His Excellency, that is an idea coming out of Guyana, coming out from our own president. That is what we must be proud of, of people from our country, citizens of our country, that we have a president doesn't only have ideas for Guyana, ideas for this small sector, but we have a president that 
take into consideration the entire region. So he said that we have to have more young people involved into agriculture and this food system. We have to develop the food system. How we can do that? Because young people today, and you all will agree with me, many young people today don't want to get involved in agri-food system, agriculture. They, thought, they think that agriculture is a menial job, more physical job. People who never went to school or people who uh, uh, hardly went to school can do agriculture. And you have many young people who they went to the University of Guyana, get a degree, come out with an agronomy degree, come out with, they came out with a diploma from a, a Guyana School of Agriculture and they are doing clerical work. The president said we have to harness all these expertise. We have to bring them into the system and how we will do that. And he came up with a very, very innovative idea. Idea said that we must look to see how we can attract these young people. And he said, let us form a company. Form a company and make these people, young people, shareholders of these company, of this company, sorry. And he, we form a company called the Agriculture Innovation Entrepreneurship Program. And from that time to now, we have more than a thousand young people, young, bright people like you, who are in this program, we have started out with the Climate Smart Agriculture, where we have a number of shade houses, and we are doing things now where in a more, in a more scientific way, in a more innovative way, in a more modern way, less labor intensive. And today, many young people who never want to get involved in food system, in the agriculture system, they are today now earn their livelihood from agriculture. And you have a chance here this morning where the president is bringing to you opportunities that will transform your life, Oppor economic opportunities that will transform your life. And you must ensure that you take up these opportunities. He spoke just now about a number of projects that we are doing in Region 5. As a matter of fact, one of the projects the president and didn't mention just now is the one that he launched the Black Belly Sheet Project. Over 100 or 200 farmers now are beneficiary in this region and across the country. And that is a program that he instructed us that and we must ensure that 35% young people and women are involved and you have a chance to involve. Because right here at, in Ellis, we are doing a large project where you can be part of that project also. So not only agriculture, when, when the president talk about the food system, we are talking about crop production only. We are talking about all around. We're talking about livestock. We are talking about aquaculture. We are talking about crops, different crops. And today when you look at our country, with the leadership that he's given, and he's very passionate about this sector, because he, want Guyana, he wants Guyana to be that food hub. He wants Guyana to be that food producing country. He wants Guyana to be back that place where we were before. And we are moving there. Because the crops that we used to cultivate, we are increasing. Every year we see increased production in those crops. But what we are doing now, we are doing new crops. We are doing things like corn and soya. Corn and soya, we import almost 40 million US dollars annually. By next year, we might be self-sufficient, and we will be self-sufficient, and we will save 40 million US dollars. And we will produce all our livestock feed right here in Guyana. That thanks to His Excellency Vision, because he brought in the people, the private sector, discussed with them, we did the infrastructure, now they are doing the planting and producing the corn and soil. Tar, he, he, when he talk about the, I don't know if you all um, uh, knew about the marine cages, when he's talking about the marine cages, many people in Guyana were laughing. So how the president talking about marine cages? Those things never, um, people never have it in this part of the world. Only places like Asia, Vietnam, China, and so those things used to happen. He brought, it, he brought in the cages. We did the pilot project. And today, now we are in the process of putting another 50 cages in different parts of the country. Different parts. Those are vision. Those are vision. And then... We talk about the aquaculture. Aquaculture today is becoming an industry in our country. And that is where you have a chance to take part in all these projects. In all these projects. And we, are war and we will ensure 
from the Ministry of Agriculture, we will have our officers work along with you, work along with you, take you through these projects so that we will, you will not fail. As you rightly said, we have the bankers here today. We'll be working on with you, working along with you. Only two days ago, um, Sean told me that we had a good meeting with the set of young people and Dr. Waldron to start that process that we started, we, we launched in Region 3 and Region 4. So the, it's moving. And when we come and talk here this morning, every single day afterwards, you'll ask me how the project in Region 5 going, what is it, uh, how, how far it's gone, and he wants to report on it. So when we finish here this morning, then the serious work start. Then the serious work start is where when we will put in the work if you want to get involved in the tunnel house that the president spoke about and, and, and Dr. Walron will explain and tell you how you could be involved and how profitable that project will be. If you want to get involved in the ponds, France production, we assign you to a pond. We already have 10 ponds at Anvawak. If you want to get involved in the black belly sheep production, and you have a number of opportunities. If you want to get involved in the hydroponics that we are building at Fort Wellington. So these are opportunities. And for the first time, I think you are hearing about these things in agriculture. Today, the agriculture sector, we have an exciting opportunities, not, not only for farmers, but young people. You can make your living out of this. And this is very important. For the first time, Guyana is producing its own hatching eggs. We start to produce our own hatching eggs. Last year, we produced 27,000. For the first half of this year, we produced 94,000. And the president gave us a target that within another couple of years, we must produce all the hatching eggs for Guyana. Almost 53 million by next year. Here the president, by next year, 53 million hatching eggs we are using annually. So these are things that are important and you young people can have the opportunity and this morning you have opportunities coming to you and you have the opportunity opportunity coming to you not only for, uh, from anybody but from the president himself came in the country last night came in the country last night he was in london or, uh, when he called me get this meeting on and I send and send him the uh, send the president the text and said the meeting is fixed for today six o'clock he said okay last night the president came in the country about seven o'clock now he's here. Now he's here with you young people. And during the course of the day, we get another, uh, probably get another 100 activities to complete, to finish things. But I am showing you that we have a president that cares. A president that not only go, um, talk things, not only talk, but he walk, talk and walk with you. And today is a very important opportunity. We will work along with you. Um, we already have two regions already we launched it region in georgetown region four and region three we are already start to have uh, uh, movements there and sean and demara bank will tell you that they already start to get these groups start to engage them and also you here this morning after the, today's lunch we will work with you we will work with you our extension officer will work with you. dr waldron will be here with you we will assign special project officer to work along with you and the bankers here will work with us and you will have a chance to ensure that you have this opportunity that you are having this opportunity this morning take it grab it with both hands grab it with both hands and a year from now this will transform your entire life and no matter if you are professional uh, professional uh, if you're a professional you're a, um, uh, you, you didn't went to school far but everybody will have an equal opportunity this morning here. We have people with degree, we have people with CSEC subjects, and, and, and so. But we will work with every single, and this is part of the process in Region 5. More young people will come along. This is a launch here this morning. I am very happy to be with the president to launch this here. But at the end of this launch, the work will commence. And I am assuring you, that with the instruction that the president has instructed uh, give me and uh, with the ministry that I am he heading, you rest assured that we will take his guidance and we will transform your life with the vision that the president has for you, the young people of our country. So I want to thank him very much and let's work together and move that process forward.
Okay, just that part. <laughs> All right, so please go ahead and come back. Go quickly.
and I will keep my presentation. I'll try to make it as pointed as possible so that I can continue to engage you throughout. So again, um, let me acknowledge the presence of His Excellency and for the sacrifice that he would have made to be in here this morning with us. Also, our Minister of Agriculture, Minister Zulfikar, and our Director General. Before I get into my presentation, I just want to say, Mr. President, how happy I am, not just to be here, but the commitment that these young, what I, I should say, prospective business leaders within the agriculture sector would have shown this morning. I was here pretty early, and when I looked across, I realized that they were all on time. When you're into agriculture business, you have to be on time. That level of commitment should be there. There is no holiday, Monday to Sunday, rain or sun. You have to be at it. Today, I'm going to speak to you about a few initiatives that can transform not only your lives, but your family and community. Why I extend it to community? Because a lot of what we are about to discuss have satellite operations. You know the, the Gaisuko kind of market set up? where somebody started selling um, cane juice and then another one with egg ball. This is the kind of thing that you guys will realize um, will happen within the next few months. And I'm sure you might be surprised when I say few months. This is not a talk shop. There's a lot of sacrifices that we would have made and this is not just about the ministry. This is about care for Guyana and want us to be truly independent when it comes to our food security. And also, I was fortunate to be in an activity at Monrepo where His Excellency met with a number of graduates from the Guyana School of Agriculture and the University of Guyana. And following that meeting, or let me say interaction, because it was more an interaction. Mr. President, I want to say this morning that we have some of the best duck producers and egg producers in Guyana coming out from that interaction which you would have had. My minister just spoke about the importance of having females involved. Included in that group, is one young lady from one of the most remote parts of our coastal um, region, Region 6. That young lady is now hatching more than 1,000 eggs per week. And that is Ducklings. And can you imagine five and $600 for Ducklings? That young lady was part of the discussion. And if you go now to Monrepo, you'll see herself and four others have another pen of partners that will be ready by when, Mr. Nikram? In three weeks, those boards will be ready for the market. So, Mr. President, that's another success story from these initiatives. Let us go to the bigger picture now in the realm of poultry. And am I permitted to touch on the other sectors? Okay. We are about to expand, make it a common phenomenon in Guyana. When you hear about tunnel ventilated and temperature control pens, we don't want that to be something that would have you thinking what this look like, who have it, maybe Guyana only have two or three. This must be a common something in each region, each sub-district. Excuse me, I have to speak about sub-district because Minister spoke about extension and so on. So we would have divided the regions into sub-districts. So you have that happening for us. That is why I am breaking it down to sub-district level. With these pens, 
what you find you can have maximum output meaning our objective is to develop some of those pens to a capacity of 40 to 45,000 birds per batch. And when you look at what is needed, we don't need 12 or 14 persons to operate those facilities. All we need the maximum three. But one individual can man two of those pens. So we're looking at two individuals can man 80,000 birds. This for me is a serious money spinner. It's a serious generational wealth development tool which is at your disposal today. Again, it is not a talk shop. We would have started a few weeks ago um, following a similar interaction on Main Street and I am happy to report the level of interest from those young professionals, sports personality, persons, normal persons you would see around, wanting to get involved in this type of production. We would have developed groups. And when you look at the level of interactions at those group level, I am amazed at time because sometimes I wonder if I'm in the right group because they are so aggressive we have a group from Region 3. If you're not focused, they'll take you down a different road because they want this thing like yesterday. But what we're trying to do is to ensure that everyone understands the concept. Again, yesterday I made the, the, um, a presentation and I was asking the question, Mo any one of you were out in the, the, the fields yesterday during the day, what the temperature and humidity was like? It was tough, right? Can you imagine broilers at three and a half weeks, four weeks old? In <laughs> exactly. So, <laughs> in those conditions, so. Those pens, what those pens will allow us to do is to, for those birds to be comfortable, maintain that 22 to 23 per, um, degrees, that's the body, body temperature that will promote effective metabolism. So what we're going to be seeing emanating out of those production systems, one, increase weight in less time. Reduce mortality right away because once you can maintain your mortality below 5%, you're looking at the next Bill Gates or Elon Musk in the poultry sector. Yes, young lady, you smile, but it's doable. You know why it's doable? Because when you guys start producing, and you see, I'm speaking future tense here. When you start producing, it won't just be production of meat. The president would have asked us, tasked us a few months ago to come up with a plan to do value added. Sausage, ham. Only Guyana School of Agriculture is doing chicken ham in Guyana. My Coney have a good group there doing um, bacon and so on. But what? There's opportunity. Why only GSA? GSA can't supply the entire Guyana with chicken ham. So those are other opportunities that we have before us. So you see, it's doable. You can be another Elon Musk within the poultry sector. These things are doable. At the end of the day, what we're trying to do and to make you understand is that poultry production is serious business and you can make it with this new system that we're about to embark on. You guys have a golden opportunity. This don't happen often. And the fact that you have at your disposal, the president, the minister, other heads, regional um, administration officers and so on. And minister, earlier you would have spoken and 
about us identifying a focal point to work with this group. Mr. Nekram, please stand. You see his shirt is well marked. Guyana Livestock Development Authority. This is your focal point for this group. All right, so we won't be getting you involved and leaving you by the wayside. We will be holding your hands and taking you along. That is important because we want you to succeed. If you fail, we fail. And those of you who know Dr. Walron know that I'm not a quitter. I'm always at it. And this will be another success story. In Region 5, I don't know if the president can recall, but he would have designated this region the livestock capital of CARICOM. And because of that, we would have launched a number of other initiatives. Minister spoke about the Barbados Black Belly Program, but he stopped short of letting you know about some of the appropriations that we had in the budget that is actually 80% complete already. That is the development of 65 acre plots for small ruminant production. That is for those persons who are involved in, in mutton production. What we are doing, in the next couple of weeks, you're going to see in the media for sure, because nothing is secret, a shipment of meat kind, sheep and goat coming into Guyana to do the crosses with the Barbados Black Belly which we have. Also, we would have had another set of monies appropriated through Parliament, and that was for the establishment of some feedlot. Some of you might know it as finishing lot. We don't want all of you to get involved in having 20 black belly in your yard with lambs and so on. I will produce the, the, the lambs, and I want you to come and buy the lambs from me. Take them to the feedlot, fatten them, because we have the, most of our, all of our rice uh, mills are along the coast. Now we have the corn and soya project. We have Gaisuko with molasses. And most importantly, we have the nutritional lab, which is about to be accredited, that will give you formulated feed that will allow those lambs to be marketed within six to seven months. That is the kind of and the approach that we're taking towards moving the sector. So yes, the poultry program is excellent, but I know to accommodate everyone at one go might be a challenge, but there's other opportunities where you can also make serious money. And the investment, the heavy lifting, has already been done by the government of Guyana. You just have to be ready, be committed, and it's going to happen. There's another one which we have before us. I'm sure most of you who pass at number 27 would see that spanking new um, abattoir there. They usually go and, and, and fish at, at, at IR Tree. So um, that is something which you guys need to bear in mind also. As it is right now, most of the animals, that is weaners, on a daily basis, I'm sure you'll see truckloads of young bulls going to the Essequibo Island. Those farmers are doing a marvelous job in the, in the islands in terms of fattening and finishing those, those animals. What we're doing in Region 5, in the Ellis area, and we're taking it to other regions also, developing the same feedlot system that will allow farmers to get involved in meaningful production. It's no longer about, I'm the owner of 500 heads of cattle. We want you to have 100 head that makes sense. All right, because we want in 14 months, you must be able to have a carcass that is 350 to 400 kilograms. That is the kind of production we're looking at. And we have the resources. The president had an interaction with ECO. And Mr. President, again, we were so fortunate because of those interactions. We imported 900 kilograms 
of improved forage seed for pasture development in the, on the saline soils north of the public road and also south of the public road. So we're looking at development of every square inch, not only along the coast, but our intermediate savannas and also the highland regions because we did soil tests throughout. So we mapped everything and we have those facilities available. We want to see, look, and you guys can bear me out here. In five years, I want us to have the biggest livestock show in Guyana. It must not be not what um, Roraima is doing or so on. We can have it right here in Guyana. And it can only happen if you guys take the reins from your parents because they're, I, I have no problem with, with, with the senior citizens, but sometime we need to transition. You guys have an opportunity to take this to another level. And I'm sure with the support from our end, this can happen. Before I close, I want to thank the banks for, the, the, for giving us a listening ear thus far and to listen, not just listen, but ask questions that are important towards the development of the industry. Because we don't want this to fail. They won't want it to fail. Because, and one of the, the, the major takeaway when we met with the banks is that they are contributing towards the development of the agriculture sector in Guyana and they see food security as a priority. You don't always have financial institutions thinking that way. So in this morning, I want to publicly, Mr. President, thank the banks for um, thinking that way, having that policy and to ensure that our farmers have that platform with which they can continue to grow. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. His Excellency, His Excellency, Honorable Minister, colleagues, friends, I'm happy to be here this morning. And you heard Dr. Waldron with the glories that the livestock industry is going through. But as chairman of the board, you can ask him two, day, two, two weeks ago what I told him. I'm totally dissatisfied with the position of GLDA in meeting the demands. Our country, the trajectory of growth, we can match it with, with our livestock produce as it is. And so I ask him, we need to have a hatchery, dock hatchery, immediately in a secure course, one in region six. We have outgrown our swine production has, has grown tenfold Doc, through the intervention of our minister and his excellency. Now we need to put abattoir, abattoir in different, different regions because they can't come to a central point anymore. This is the trajectory of development. And I know the president and minister spoke about some of the success story but that only is a, a tip. The amount of female who are involved in apiculture and our, and our production in apiculture in, in Guani has moved 10 times, uh, uh, 10 times. When we were producing, when we weren't producing some month, like June, July, when, when there's no um, seasonal um, honey production, Dr. Walton can tell you what, what, what we are doing now. And so the success continues, and there are many, 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 many success. But let me, the, the, the task at hand, two, two, two Fridays ago, I think, when the president called me to State House to meet a set of, uh, a group, they were so eager, about 30, 30 young uh, persons were there, they were so eager to listen what, what we had to say. The president made the introduction, and then he went off to, to Masjid. And so I spoke to the, 20, the 30 youth, and they were so excited, enthusiastic. Um, and they asked if I can send, send them or the plan. I did send them the plan. I did send, send them the plan. 
And after that, they asked for a presentation. They want to see um, how this will be benefiting them. And you can see the kind of leadership they had. They want to see it. And so I, I arranged at the Ministry of Agriculture, I arranged a presentation um, both with the, with the Van Army Streams and Dr. Waldron did a presentation. The youths were so excited. They, they were so excited they had wanted to go to the bank the very next day. But I think it was, it was some, some other intervention. Was it was a Saturday. <laughs> yeah, I remember it Saturday. However, this was, done, this was done yesterday. Three groups met uh, with the bank yesterday. And today, some aspect of it will be concluded. The ministry will take the task of um, supplying the legal uh, personnel to form the company, to assist these youths to form the company. And I think that's what the bank is waiting for. Land development has conti uh, is continuing. I just spoke to the MMA uh, GM here, and I think the, the president will uh, announce where, where this part will be. In addition to all of these, in, in addition to all of these, two agri uh, forum two years ago, when the president was able to sort from Exxon Mobile the 4.7 million US hydroponic farms for region two, five, and, and 10. I'm pleased, Mr. President, today, all the materials are on site. Constructions, construction begin today. And there are 20 youths who will be uh, employed to work with the te technical people. They are here from, from um, Brazil. They'll ensure that all three farms in region two, five, and 10 are up and running. Also, they are tasked to ensure the forest crop. The forest crop is, is, is um, planted and all the technical training will be done. So that's another opportunity here, uh, here, here. And also, you spoke about the, the, the Vanami. In addition, the youths are also it will be involved in the in the Ellis Farm. That's the the 50 um, disabled the 50 disabled youth. Um, there are three 50 acres that has been, been developed already. The houses are there. The the pens are there. Um, one 50 acres is for the for youths. One is for disabled, and one is a combination between um, Barbadian and and Guyanese. So all these are some of the opportunity. And, and where we are. Also, Mr. President, this right across the country, also re Region 2, Region 6 is asking for the, for the same facilities to be there. Even though we are putting up shade houses, and two, one is at completing a charity, the other one is at, is at, at undermining, and several in Region 6, there's more demand. The youths are, are, are encouraged and they want to see more of these kinds of developments. So we must thank you, um, Mr. President and Minister, for continuing to push agriculture in our country. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Mr. President, Minister, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's um, good to be here, and we thank the President. Thank you, sir. Um, Sean Bertrand, CEO for Guyana Bank for Trade Industry Limited. Um, it's really good to be here, and once again, we want to thank the president for coordinating this outreach. Um, we've been doing this now for a few weeks, and as Dr. Waldron said, we're moving along quite nicely. And I want to commend the president for the initiative. But you know, an, an idea and a concept is only good as a concept until it gets completed. What we have been very impressed with was the thought that has gone through right through to completion in that a lot of the things you would ask for in a typical lending project we are seeing, um, the formation of the companies to do this makes it a lot easier to lend. Banks get a lot of hard time and criticism for not being able to give financing. But sometimes it's difficult to have a conversation with potential business people. And you're all business people here this morning. And help them guide and understand. But I'm happy that the Ministry, the Livestock Association, has taken that initiative to work along with them and show them the path to enhancing their lives uh, and ensuring that they have generated wealth, not just for this generation, but generation to come. Um, what is happening <coughs> in Ghana is very important. If you, if you look at the, the half-year numbers, 
the economy continues to do well. But importantly, when you look at the non-oil economy, and that's something GBTI is heavily focused on, Mr. President, we want to play a big part in everything in oil, yes, for sure. But then the other sectors, we are a local bank, so we understand the value that agriculture brings. And agriculture, as the minister was saying, is not to be viewed in a negative light anymore. But food production is important. Food security is important. We're talking about the 25 by 25 goals set by His Excellency. So these are all things we want to embrace. And we are here this morning, not just for talk, but to do business. So we're looking forward to the end where we can meet with you, talk to you, understand what you want, and importantly, how we can facilitate for you to enhance your lives, your families, and for generations to come. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kuen Ramshwar, the officer in charge at the Maika branch of Jamara Bank. Firstly, thank you to Mr. President and the Minister for extending the invitation to the bank. We, of course, further to what Mr. Gortran said, Jamara Bank is also focused on all the other sectors, the housing sector, agriculture sector. Um, we're happy here. We're happy to be here to support and provide any guidance that may be needed. One of the things that we see that will be key to the success of this is the continuous technical support that will be provided by GLDA and NARI under the Ministry of Agriculture. Um, I know most of you are already Damara Bank customers. Um, <laughs> so you guys know how to reach on to us. You know we're here to help you and we're not far away. Right? Thank you for your time. We're here, myself and Fabi. But what uh, between Damar Bank and GBTI, what, what this will tell you is that many of your colleagues in the other region, they have already started the process. And uh, the government, we have already started to put in the basic infrastructure. And very soon, uh, the financing will be finalized for a number of those projects. And those projects will uh, go into full swing. We are trying, uh, well, not war, we're still trying to get at least the first two projects bring out production before the end of the year, before the end of, right, Dr. Warren? I want to also take time this, uh, this morning to recognize Dr. Warren, his team from the Ministry of Agriculture, Lionel, his team from the Ministry of Agriculture, and all the technical staff uh, within the Ministry of Agriculture. The extension officers, I think we put a lot of licks on them, but now uh, we are seeing more and more they're getting in groove and they're in the fields supporting the farmers. We want more of this, and uh, because as, as uh, Puran and Sean alluded to, this is a partnership, and the technical support and guidance is important in this partnership, as much as the business and entrepreneurial guidance. The banks, is all, they have also committed to, uh, to before and during the process uh, to have uh, their financial specialists talk to the investors on financial management also. That's important. Financial management, accountability, uh, uh, risk assessment is very important. Because in agriculture, when you have a very good crop, you don't take one of the mistakes we made historically. And that is because we've been doing more uh, traditional agriculture, is that when the farmer gets a big crop, they go and buy a bigger machine. Uh, so if you had a, a, a tractor that can actually do the work, you want a bigger tractor, you want two tractor, or then you want every, on the every bottom house you have a combine. When one combine can rip all the rice in the region. So we don't want that at all. That, that is how you, that is setting yourself up for failure. So when you get additional revenue, they have to teach you how you manage that, how you, how you uh, create a, uh, uh, you know, in, in local paradox, a hard time fund, but really um, uh, how you create um, accounts that will that will be there to sustain you. Because like any other business, there will be time when there is weak uh, um, uh, revenue. And during that period, uh, you have to ensure that the time of strong revenue balances off. Because at the end of the year, is your bottom line. Not many people look at their monthly bottom line. But it's your bottom line at the end of the year that matters. And, and that is why this, this involvement of the banks and so on is very important. So now we'll open uh, for any questions you may have. Um, I also want to say that uh, locally, we have a, 
And if the local leaders can stand, you have Nigel here, you have the chairman, the vice chairman, uh, Lionel. So uh, MMA, we have people there too. We're gonna ask these, we're gonna ask these local leaders also. Uh, well, yes. So, so, uh, so we have these guys who will, um, who will be working with you all uh, and the Ministry of Agriculture to ensure that this is successful, to ensure you're given the support to make it uh, successful. The uh, Guyana Police Force too, and the uh, the GDF. We because in your system you have to learn how to develop security uh, within your business sector, and they would also uh, give some technical guidance and so on. So even in the Guyana Police Force, the commander, for example, I was just having a conversation with him, and he is very very keen in helping you in ensuring that, and that is why we want concentration of infrastructure. You see. If you have uh, 50 farms in the back dam, and you have 50 farmers, it's, uh, you, you know, it's 50 persons going with maybe 50 different tractors to 50 different plots of land. When we develop these high performance innovation centers of five acres and 10 acres, it's all of you going to get at one area, one location. So the overheads become easier to manage, the concentration of costs become easier to manage, and it become easier for, for the police and everybody. So that is how this whole thing is going to evolve and to be built out. Um, the exciting projects in, in, in this region, the project in this region also, in addition to the region being a livestock capital of the Caribbean, and I'm very happy, Dr. Walron, that you're uh, pursuing this initiative with such vigor, but we also have the prawns production facility we, where we brought in Indonesian specialists. And the Indonesian specialists are here now. By the, by the first quarter next year, or the end of this year still, the feed mill the hatchery for for the uh, uh and we'll finish this this month then and by the end of january the feed mill will finish. so we're thinking this through we're building the entire ecosystem to support uh this this uh production so that even when we have excess production of rice and the market price is low now we uh and micro price is low and during those period we can stock up on rice to go into the feed mill production and that is how it works. That is how we become competitive, all right? So the floor is all yours now. Anyone with a question or are we very clear? Any suggestion? Uh, good morning, the all protocol been established. Uh, my name is Alex Dave. Yeah, good morning again. Uh, my name is Alex Dave Fraser. I would just like to find out a question about the interest rates. That is very important to me. And also for GBTI, will you guys consider opening a branch in Region 5? I know about them wire banks, so I'm good with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Uh, we actually have some plans to do something very, very soon before the end of the year. Um, something that is really more specifically geared towards your neck of the woods. And not just location, but the type of appetite that you would have. Um, in terms of interest rates, we've committed to the president to do between 3 3.5% 3 on the poultry side of things. And beat that anywhere in the world. And uh, let me also say that you don't need to see... The, the banks are doing an amazing job. You're asking the bank when they're coming with the office here. The CEO of the bank is here with you, with this initiative. So you have to recognize the opportunity that is before you. So, uh, and, and here is it that the CEO at five this morning would have left his home to be here because that is, we want to show you how, uh, and, uh, how strong the leadership the bank is taking, but how committed the bank is. He could have delegated this to any staff. But he is here himself. I know the CEO of the Amara Bank is out of the country. So that, that, is, that is the commitment. And 3.5%, three to three, three and a half percent, you, you, you're really closing your eyes there. So let me hear you all. We want to do this? Yes or no? No, I want to hear you. That's it? 
Do we want to do it? No, no, no. Do we want to do it? Yes. Uh, Good morning, I hear you, uh, I hear you properly again. Uh, do you want to do it? Yes. Nah, you, I ain't hearing nothing from you right now. <laughs> do you want to do it? Yes, sir. Getting better. Good afternoon. Everybody. Good morning, everybody. My name is Diesel and Juvine, and but from Oakton Village, West Coast Barbies, and I'm a deeply lover of poetry farming. I love, and it might wear a lot of chickens, right? And sometimes I support my vice chairman, <laughs> Mr. Peters, right? But I, I'm so happy that this um, thing come up about poetry farm. I could tell you, poetry farm is very interesting. There's a lot of young people other than government work, self-employed work, I mean like poetry farming, mining sheep and all those things are very interesting. So, and one question I have to ask, I hear about all of this um, big weir of farm, um, mining of chickens and there's a market for these things to be taken off. That's the important part of what we're doing. So, what, another part of the ecosystem that we're doing is that the ministry, the, and what Dr. Wall run, we couldn't address everything, but we are developing storage facilities in all the region. So that, you know, right now, we can't even produce, the, 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 the demand is growing at such a rapid pace that it's outpacing our demand. For example, if you look at broiler meat, in 2022 and 2023, uh, 2023, almost 252,000 metric tons uh, was the demand in the region. That's a market of about 457 million US dollars. We're also working with the Middle East because we want to set up a halal industry certification program. So we'll have specialized market, niche markets, but even for our local markets now. So we have the storage that we're working to have, uh, the, the value added, that is um, the, the sausages, uh, pure uh, uh, meat, um, the meatball, having the meatball prepared and, 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 uh, and frozen, all of that, new market, higher value market. And um, so that is a big part of it. So you, the offtake is there. The offtake is there. But what you know, you and I know, what is the problem? As a farmer, you know that we work towards a fixed price mechanism. But a middleman will take that fixed price and increase it by 200%. So what we have to get is a commitment from all the farmers that we are working with a price margin and a price uh, settlement. Not when you start getting the resources you believe you want to increase the prices. That is not sustainable. So one of the important things with this type of activity is that we are setting up the fair price mechanism for the farmers and that goes directly into, uh, into the, the value added production or the market, right? Who next? Yes, Next is Libby. Good morning everyone, my name is Amin Ali. Um, Mr. President, recently I've moved back to Ghana almost a year now, and um, I used to do mutton production from Trinidad. Um, you stated that people will be allocated certain lands to do mutton production. I wasn't clear on it. If it is like you stated, five acre plots. No, no, that's the, the, the days of those land allocation are gone. Let me be very frank with you. We don't have the land. We don't have the land, and the Linden Suicide like Highway all over. So what we're doing now is that we're creating joint mechanism. We're developing the plots. The government is developing the feeding lot. If you are a, a, a man who wants to do the fattening and to sell the mutton, then we bring you in. You have access to the feeding development plot. You fatten your mutton, you sell it, and you're helping the ma management also. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. And talk to Dr. Listen, before you leave, talk to Dr. Walrun. So all of you, like the, the poultry guy, talk to Dr. Walrun about the initiatives you have to. He'll be here until 10, okay? The young man to the right. Hi. Good, hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Shannon Rampasad. I am the owner of the Poultry Farm and Hatchery in Region 5. Um, I have a question for Doctor. Um, you said that uh, Nari is the only place that is doing harm production right now. DSA, DSA, sorry. Um, would there be training provided for that? Yes, um, training is ongoing all the time. Uh -huh. We wish if we can have 10 persons to train. So if you're yes. So if you're interested, just tell him. 
and they will train you and also give you the technical assistance to start up the production. Okay, thank you. And um, one more thing, there is high demand lately, right, in Region 5 and around the country in Guyana for French Muscovy ducklings, right? But in Region 5, it seems to be that a lot of people is not known of this because there hasn't been a lot of investment. And I am a farmer, I have hatcheries and everything. Hatcheries could hold over 5,000 eggs. So you want to get involved in the production of duckling? I am already in it. Excellent, excellent. but uh, you're right. Yeah. People are not making use of this opportunity. Oh. That, and I tell you, even in Region 3, the guys are telling me, like, if you want 10 duck, is you got to pick it up at three different places. Yes. So the, the market is huge. Like during this period when we have an influx of people for the CPL uh, yes. Crooked Carnival. Christmas yeah, every, and Christmas coming up, you know, yeah. more cutters. And I see so, the market. Uh, people sell for 600, I sell for 500. But yeah. the demand is so much, especially in the Essequibo region, people drive all the way from here. So, that's, so, so I'm very happy yes. that you as a farmer is telling them about the opportunity and how they have to make use of it. And we are supporting that. And it's very efficient, efficient. Yeah. Yes, young lady. Dr. Warren, and see what he has for the 1,500 eggs, and especially the Amerindian communities. Let's, rep let's get him to come, work with us, and if it's local, let's replicate it in Amerindian communities so that they can hatch their eggs right there than, than to fly it in. Yeah, meet him after that. That's, that's, that is what we want. That, and let's give him a big applause. You know, most times people look in the universities for the innovators, but the innovators are right here on the ground doing it themselves. Really, I'm very proud of you. What's your first name again? Chanda, and I'm very, very proud of you. Very, very proud of you. So that is what we want. And we must get this story out, this story, and that is what we need to replicate in all the uh, Amerindian villages so that they can have uh, a cost-effective uh, uh, hatching, hatching facility. So my name is Larry Chan, and my husband just came and talked. He recently moved back from um, from Trinidad to Guyana. About two years ago, and um, so our question was about the sheep production. What resources would there be for farmers in the sheep production in, in terms of vaccination to prevent illness, example? Well, we have exciting news for you guys. Uh, right now we are supporting the vaccination program, but let me tell you, we are thinking this through so people don't have, have an understanding as to the intensity of work that is going on. As you are speaking, we are finalizing now the building of a facility in Guyana for the production of vaccines for livestock. We are bringing in the technical, all the vaccines. So we are bringing in the technical, not bringing in, we brought in a full technical team already. The assessment is finished. They've identified a startup area. We've brought the private sector play on board. They're bringing investment in. And very soon, we'll be producing all our livestock vaccination needs in Guyana. And by the end of next year, Waldron, if we do it right, we'll produce all for the whole Caribbean. All right, Sandra. This is a really exciting future, you know, by the time we get to 2030, we'll be so proud of each other and proud of what this country will be able to achieve. It will be unbelievable. What I want you guys to do as young people too is to block out the noise. There's a lot of noisy people in our society. Ignore the noise, stay focused. Like my friend from Hope Town will tell you how he got to stay double focused. You have to ignore the noise, stay focused, understand what you want to achieve. 
and work hard on achieving that. And we will support you working hard on achieving it, okay? Good morning, everyone. My name is Sandra Glasgow, and I'm from Central Mike Pony. Mr. President, I must say thank you for being here this morning. My question is, would there be any financial assistance for a person starting the project or do you have to find the, uh, um, get the finance for herself? For me, I listen, I am happy, I'm anxious for what I would, for what I would have heard from Mr. Waldron and team and I'm ready to start. Thank you. So there's tremendous financial support. That's why I'm telling you, we're taking very low value. We are putting value into that land, making it bankable. That's, that's the term I want to use making the land bankable, providing the technical assistance that is very expensive that you would have otherwise paid a million for, doing the entire business plan for you that costs tremendous money if you had to uh, pay for it, and walk you through the process towards getting the loan. So then you have to put up a little bit of resources also as a group, and then we walk you through, through the building out phase and, and the training and development phase. So this is really, uh, it's more than financial support. It's financial, technical, human. Uh, so it's a lot of pieces that we're putting together to support you here. You, and the bank also, let me also recognize that the bank is also, you, to, to work at three and three and a half percent and still put this infrastructure in place to support shows that they have a real commitment to national development and national policy. All right then, thank you very much. Uh, so we can, now, uh, we can now move on to other things for the day, whilst you stay here and work on the technical thing. One of the beauty about this whole thing is that Nigel just told me, you have 13 persons with first degree at least around this table here. So that tells you about the capability that we are building. So it's, it's everybody. The one Guyana, it's about all of us helping each other, pooling our talent together, pooling our resources together, pooling our differences together. And when we pool that, we get the richest outcome. All right? So thank you very much.